Well, Boeing's troubled Starliner spacecraft has landed safely in the US three months after it was expected to return to Earth. The reusable craft's maiden journey to the International Space Station was marred by malfunctions. Instead of traveling home aboard the Starliner, the astronaut crew are now stuck in space until February. Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. The Starliner's smooth return capped off a mission which was anything but. The Boeing spacecraft arrived in a New Mexico desert without the astronauts who were on board when it left. Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams departed in June for what was meant to be an eight-day trip. And liftoff of Starliner at Atlas V. It was the Starliner's first expedition with crew, ahead of it being certified for routine missions. But unexpected malfunctions on its way to the International Space Station derailed those plans. Despite yeah. Boeing's assurances, NASA deemed it too risky for astronauts to travel back with the spacecraft. Space flight is risky, even at its safet safest and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. Wilmore and Williams are now stuck at the International Space Station for another six months. They will hitch a ride back to Earth with Boeing's rival space company, SpaceX. Boeing did not front the media after the Starlink's return, with NASA instead fielding questions. We had planned to have the mission land with Butch and Sonny on board. I think there's depending on who you are on the team, uh, different emotions associated with that. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to take a little time to work through that uh, for me a little bit and then for everybody else on the Boeing and NASA team. So. Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams' eight-day mission is now turning into an eight-month saga with their eventual return to Earth planned in February. And Keith Cowing is the editor of nasawatch.com. He joins me from Washington. Keith, so good to have you with us. Um, tell me, now that the Starliner spacecraft made it back to Earth and in a joint uh, press conference, NASA and Boeing, uh, NASA just called it a bullseye landing. Uh, is uh, troubled Boeing now back in NASA's good books? Well, um, in terms of what the spacecraft did tonight, uh, it was virtually flawless, so that's working in Boeing's favor. But uh, the hard part comes with explaining why they had to do it this way and uh, what it takes to fix it. That is not going to be easy, and it's not going to be inexpensive. And, of course, uh, before this uh, bullseye landing, uh, there was some trouble beforehand. Uh, some strange things went on with the Starliner craft. Uh, we actually uh, have an audio that's circulating of noises uh, that it was making recently while docked to the ISS. Uh, there is a recording of astronaut Butch Wilmore. He's speaking with ground control on that audio. Uh, Keith, let's just listen to that and then afterwards tell me what you make of it. Uh, There's a strange noise coming through the speaker. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe is connected uh, between here and there, making that happen. We can configure that, Butch. Give us a minute and I'll call you back when it's ready. Okay. Station Houston on two, we're configured for audio via hardline and CST. All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. Yeah, I'll do it one more time, and I'll let you scratch your head to see if you can figure out what's going on. Here we go. Okay, Butch, that was a no, I'm just imagining being stuck uh, on the ISS uh, in space. It's quite spooky to hear that, very reminiscent of a sci-fi thriller movie. Uh, what was that noise? Well, everybody wants to think that it was this. Uh, but, you know, quite frankly, being in television as we are, we're talking by satellite, there's a delay, somebody has a mic open, there's feedback, and it goes back and forth, and you, you know, start... Yeah, but it did sound like a Star Trek episode that we want to hear. Okay, so nothing to worry about. No. No. 
Well, Boeing's troubles um, still have left uh, two astronauts stranded on the ISS. Um, they're now due to be picked up by SpaceX craft in February. Why in February? Why not sooner? Well, what we have here is sort of, it's an ex, you have a, a research base in orbit. It's hard to get to. And just imagine it's Antarctica. And you have to plan the planes to fly down there with the supplies and the people and it's cold and the weather. And you have a plan how you want to do that. And then something like this happens where the spacecraft that was supposed to make a short visit comes back without the people. And you got to eventually bring them home. So the next time you're sending up a crew, you got to kick two people off of that flight. And that spacecraft has to stay up there for six months. So... Suddenly, a, you know, an eight-day trip turns into a, an eight-month tour in outer space. Uh, Keith, you said earlier uh, about, obviously, Boeing's, the Starliner uh, spacecraft's uh, troubles that, that caused all that situation. And during that press conference, NASA also said that uh, it somehow seems too early uh, to let uh, the Starliner uh, spacecraft uh, carry astronauts again. Will we see that happening again? Is it just a question of, okay, we need to do more tests? Well, you know, there's a joke here that in Auf English, uh, NASA stands for never a straight answer. And they don't really want to say yes or no until they're 200 percent certain. So that's why you got that answer. But it is a very difficult thing as to why these thrusters did not work in the first place and why they seem to work fine today. What's different? And that's not exactly clear. But there's contracts that go with this and money and the way that the contract was set up. And Boeing has lost a lot of money on this. So it's a multivariant equation, as NASA would say. In other words, it's not a simple answer. Okay. And it also seems the Starliner uh, story, the Starliner saga, isn't quite finished yet. Keith Cowing, editor of NASAWatch.com. Thank you so very much. My pleasure.